As a photographer, having the ability to manipulate and work with colors is one of the most valuable tools at your disposal. Luminar AI gives us access to some really powerful tools for working with color. So knowing how to use those tools is really important. So in this video, I'm gonna look through six tools, show you what they do and how and when to use them and stick around till the end because I've got some bonus tips for you on working with color. If you don't have Luminar AI yet, don't worry, I've got a link below and a discount code for you as well. So let's take a look at Luminar's color tools. So we're going to work with this photograph here that I took in the North Island of New Zealand. I think that it's got a really nice color palette already, but we're gonna work with this just to demonstrate the tools. If you guys have seen my videos before, I always like to dive straight into this really powerful Accent AI slider and just see by cranking this up a little bit exactly what Luminar AI can do to enhance our photo. And then it's always a good idea to toggle the before and after just to get a feel for it. Maybe I don't want to push that quite as far. Let's grab the sky enhancer. That's just making those colors a little richer in the sky. So that'll be beneficial for us. And at this point, in terms of an edit, that is all I'm going to do with this photo, just so we can concentrate on color. I'm going to turn off our film strip just so that we get a little bit more visual real estate to work with this photo. And let's look at tool number one, and that is within the light section here. We have access to the temperature and tint sliders. And currently our white balance is set to as shot and that's what the camera thought was the correct white balance. But we have the option to change this if we want to. So we can work with the temperature slider and crank things to the right to warm things up. Or alternatively, we can go to the left and kind of cool things down. So now we've got a more neutral representation of the scene. We've also got access to the tint, which allows us to introduce more green or magenta into the scene. So you can use these quite creatively to, for instance, warm up a photograph, or if you prefer, you can use them to try and create a more accurate representation of the scene. It's entirely up to you. Another great way to control color is with the curves adjustments. But if you're pretty new to photo editing, I wouldn't worry too much about diving into this. There are much easier tools available to us, but I just thought I'd show you what is possible with this. So rather than just controlling our contrast, what a lot of people know curves for, and those contrast changes are accessible to us through this white selection point here through having this bullet point selected here, we can double click to get rid of those points. And if we come into any of the red, green or blue channels, so with the blue channel, what we can do is click and drag a new point to introduce more blue, or we can take blue away by bringing the point below the line there. And that's actually introducing the opposite color. To get rid of these points, you just double click them. But one thing I really love about the curves tool is what you can actually do is actually change the white point itself to a color. So for example, if we want to change the white sun here to more of a yellow, all I need to do is click the top right point of the blue channel here and basically click this and drag that down. And what that's doing is saying the very brightest point in this photo, which was represented by that point just up here, change the color towards yellow as I bring this down. So you could either go towards the blue and cool things off or towards the yellow. And that's quite neat because we're actually introducing a color into what was otherwise pure white. So within this light section here, we have access to two really powerful tools to control our color. I'm going to reset that and let's move on. The third option we have is the actual color tool itself. If you don't see this HSL panel here, that's because that will be contracted down there and you just need to click on the arrow to expand that view. But the first part of the panel controls saturation on a global level. So basically every single color, we can make it stronger or we can decrease the saturation of all the colors and reduce it and take it further towards a black and white image. And this is really great if you're wanting to create like a soft, subtle toned image, you can actually reduce the saturation. Vibrance works in a very similar way and you may not actually realize quite what the difference is, but as you play around with the vibrance and the saturation sliders, you will actually start to learn the subtle nuances of the vibrant slider and how it affects colors slightly differently. The idea of the vibrant slider originally when it was introduced is so that if you're working on a portrait of somebody, you can actually crank the vibrancy of the whole image up and it's going to saturate most of the colors like the blues and the greens, whilst not really affecting the oranges too much. We've also got the remove color cast slider as well. And as I push that to the right, you'll see that that lovely warm orange glow that we had from the evening sunlight is just being taken away from our image. 
So being able to remove color casts is a really useful thing to be able to do. Again, in this instance, I really like the warmth of this photo, so I'm gonna leave that be. When we dive into the HSL section here, which stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance, we have access to either change the actual hue of the colors themselves. So if I come into the blue, so watch the sky, I can either push that more towards a cyan tone, or if I go the other way, it'll take it more towards a purple tone. So using this section of the tool, we can actually manipulate and shift the whole color palette itself. Within this drop down box, we also have access to a saturation section. And rather than working on a global scale, like this saturation slider here that manipulates every single color in our image, this section lets us just get a little bit more specific. So if we wanted to bring up the saturation of the blues only, we can grab that slider and push it to the right. And then you can see that this section up here where there's more blue suddenly becomes much more vibrant with that blue. If we wanted to take away just the orange, for example, we can do that. Or alternatively, we could enhance the oranges like that. So if I just toggle this effect off and on, you can see that we've just enhanced those oranges. One final thing that we could do within this section is shift the hues. So we could actually move the whole hue range as we grab this slider and push that around. So you could use this for some really creative purposes if you wanted to. And unlike the light tool, we now have access to Luminar's masking. So we can add a mask, and if we just want to, let's say, warm up the area around the sun, we can just paint around the sun, and that effect that we created within this color palette is only being applied here. If I just do one sweep across here, you'll see that suddenly we get that color introduction across there. So the fact that we can make all of these changes to colors and then paint those effects in exactly where we want them is insanely powerful. So that's three color tools we've looked at already. Let's reset that by clicking the reset button there, close this panel down and move on to the next one. The next place we need to visit is the creative section. And in here we have two of my favorite tools for working with color. We have the mood and we have the toning tool. Now both of these are really good for harmonizing colors within your images. Whereas the color tool was quite specific and we were able to shift colors around at our choosing, what the mood tool does and also the toning tool as well is actually allow us to create an overall look based on color. So for example, let's start with the mood section. Now this tool is insanely powerful and super, super easy. It's among my favorite tools inside of Luminar AI. Basically, we have access to these lookup tables. That's what LUT stands for. And the movie industry has been using these for years. And finally, photography has caught up with what they've been doing in the movie industry. And basically, we have access to all these different looks. And we can just hover our mouse over them and see how that affects our photo. And basically, what it's doing is remapping the colors in the photo and also the contrast of the photo to a completely new color palette. I just think that's so so cool. So for example, let's say I really like the look of Riverside. All I do is click that and it's done. And we can toggle that off and toggle that on. And what a huge difference that is. If we look at the before and the after, it really does make a massive change. And the standard amount that that's applied with is 30. And for a lot of applications, that works really, really well. You can reduce the effect if you want to, if you feel it's just a little bit too strong. Or what I sometimes do is crank it all the way to the right to 100%. I'm never going to use it at this strength, but I find that's quite a useful thing to do when you actually want to see what the lookup tables, the LUTs, are actually doing at full strength. And that gives you a much better understanding of how the colors within your scene are being manipulated. I quite like the way Genius is affecting the photo. It's quite a soft and subtle look. So I can click Genius knowing what it's doing, toggle it off, toggle it on, and then I can reduce the amount down to a place where I feel I'm happy with it. I like the more soft and muted look of this, but if you want to, for any of these LUTs, what you can do is grab the contrast slider and either reduce or increase the contrast. We also have the option to increase the saturation here as well, or just take it away a little bit further. So hopefully you can see just how powerful this particular tool is. Again, toggle it off, toggle it on. I really love using this just to create a bit of a feeling for your photograph. Now, obviously we don't have to use these tools in isolation. We can use mood in conjunction with any of those other tools that we've looked at already, or any of the tools that I'm gonna show you coming up. 
But just so we're working with a clean slate, I am going to reset this, close that tool down, and move into the toning section. Now the toning section is really good for creating a color harmony, basically some balance in your photo where you can talk directly into the shadows and the highlights. So if you think back to your art classes, you probably learned what the complementary colors were. So for example, we could put some blue into the shadows and some oranges into the highlights. So let's do that. Let's have shadows selected, crank the saturation up so that we can see what's going on. And currently our hue is on red. I'm going to grab the slider and start moving that through the different range of hues. And so basically we can come in and dial in some of this blue into the shadows. I'll toggle it off and toggle it on just so that you can see that that's introducing some blues. If you feel like it's not enough, you can just push that saturation slider further. I normally like to work quite heavy handed with the saturation amount just so that I can see how the color combination is working between the highlights and the shadows. And then once I've done that, I reduce the overall amount to a point where I'm happy with it. So let's jump into the highlight section and let's add that complementary color. Let's crank the saturation up. We're currently on red, but we had blue before. So we're wanting to just add a little bit of orange to complement the shadows toning. So now let's turn this off and turn it on just to see what we can do. In my opinion, this is far too strong, but we can reduce the amount. And so we're just getting a little bit of that effect coming into the photo and it just helps to harmonize the whole image. Here's a little bonus tip regarding the toning section. You can actually use this to tone your black and white photos as well. So let me temporarily turn this off, come to the black and white section and convert our photo to black and white. We'll just do a very quick conversion just for demonstration purposes. And now we'll come down to the toning section and we'll turn this back on. And just like that, you can see you're able to actually tone a black and white image. Now, normally I wouldn't recommend going particularly high with this effect, but you can just ease a little bit of this in just to give it a soft, subtle mood. So this is before, this is after. It's a really great tool for working with color, but as you can see, it's really beneficial to know about it so you can use it if you want to with your black and whites. Just for the sake of thoroughness, let's just open the balance section here. And this just allows you to say that you want the shadows to be more influential in the toning or the highlights. And so you can actually fine tune your toning exactly as you want it. I could reset both of these or just jump into my history panel and click original. I'll come back to my tools. And last but not least, let's come down to the professional section. And in here we have color harmony. This gives us the ability to warm up our image again, to cool it down. We can work on our brilliance and actually increase that. If we want to add color contrast, we can do that as well. And that's actually a really great way to actually introduce contrast. Other than the more traditional approaches, we have the option to change the hue slightly and we can increase the intensity of the warm colors or decrease it. And the same with the cool colors as well. Color balance section just below allows us access to the shadows and highlights just like we had with the toning tool, but now we also have the option to play with the mid-tones as well. Just for the sake of being complete, I wanted to show you this tool, but personally, this is not one of my favorites and I rarely use it. Guys, I really hope that's been useful for you. As promised, here are some tips for when you're working with color. Number one, I strongly recommend working with a color calibrated monitor. If you're using a cheap monitor that isn't really rendering colors accurately, then that's just a bit of a recipe for disaster when it comes to color editing. Now you don't need to go as high end as an ISO monitor like I'm using, but if you are working with color on a daily basis and you do this professionally, I would strongly recommend looking at getting one of those monitors. I've got a link to my one in the description below. Tip number two, try to minimize your use of these color tools. You don't want to be using a whole host of them and getting confused. It's better to stick with one or two tools and really hone in using those tools on controlling the color accurately. Tip number three, try to concentrate on complementary color schemes. That's going to mean that your photos just look so much more professional. Tip number four, try to imbue your photo with a mood or a feeling through your color palette. Don't forget that colors have a profound psychological impact on people. So you want to leverage that when you're editing your photos so that you can make your viewers feel a certain way. Tip number five, if you're working on a set of imagery, what you want to do is try and keep that color palette consistent through the whole range. That will help to tie your photos together as a body of work. 
So for example, if you're a wedding photographer, you don't want to be processing the different parts of the day all differently and just having a higgledy piggledy mishmash of photos. If you keep your color grading consistent right from the start of the wedding, right through to the end, or any body of work that you're creating, trust me, it's going to look so much more professional when it's presented as a body of work with a consistent color theme. Tip number six, edit with intention and purpose. Just because you can change the hue and mess around with the colors doesn't mean that you should. By all means, play around with these really powerful tools, but I would recommend have an idea in your head of where you want to take your photo, what mood and emotion you want to convey, and remember, a little goes a long way. That's it for our video on color tools inside of Luminar AI. I really hope this has been useful and beneficial to you guys. If it has, do me a favor, help me out with a thumbs up. If you want to learn more about Luminar AI or photo editing in general, please subscribe to the channel. And if you know of someone who may benefit from a video like this, feel free to share it with them too. And if you don't have Luminar AI, don't forget I've got that link and discount code for you as well. The kids need a good night kiss and my wife's ready to watch Netflix. So I'm out of here. Cheers, guys. <laughs>